Hello, welcome back to Long Arm Dash Tech, where our mission is to delight the sterning quilters by helping them optimize the performance of their long arm systems and the frames they ride on. Today we're going to be changing a check spring on a machine with an electronic tension assembly, in this case a handy quilter Amera. <clears throat> These springs only cost five dollars or so and you should keep a spare or two around as they can weaken and break. This particular Amara is a 2018 version other long arms with electronic tension measurement systems such as later generation Avantis and Fusions, all the Infinities, Fortes, and the Baby Lock Regalias will use this same process. If you have a long arm without an electronic tension assembly, the process is easier. There's another video on this website that will walk you through the steps. The only tool you will need for this is a 2 millimeter hex or Allen wrench. In this case, I'm going to be using a T-handle version but there's plenty of other options available such as a swivel set you can see the two millimeter uh, tool on the end of it or a set of L wrenches both the swivel set and L wrenches are readily available at any big box store like a Home Depot or Lowe's a auto parts store or a local hardware like uh, Ace or True Value for less than ten bucks so if uh, you don't have that tool handy you can certainly go pick one up before you start, please note that you're going to be removing a half dozen or so parts. They will need to be reinstalled in the exact order and the orientation in which they were removed. I encourage you to remove them one at a time, lay them down in the same position, and that will make it easy for you to reinstall them correctly. Step number one is we're going to remove the knob on the tension assembly. It just twists off counterclockwise. So pull it off, put it down in a spot that you can uh, easily store it. Next we're going to remove a detente washer. This washer is called a detente because on one side of it, which you probably can't see, but I will put up a picture, it's got ridges. These ridges face the inside towards the machine. So make sure when you put it back on, you put it on with the detentes facing inside. I'm going to put it down in its order. Next we have a cone spring with a long tail on it can see that it's also uh, sometimes people call it a volcano spring so put it down in its uh, spot next we have three discs we have the first one that's the base that the spring sits on it's called the spring base so we're going to pull it off put it down in its order next we have two tension discs the outer disc that I'm pulling off now and then the inner disc and you'll see they are convex uh, or concave depending on which way you're looking at them but the flat surfaces face each other so when you reinstall them you need to make sure uh, they look like that let me show you how I have these laid out and see I've got a piece of paper that has them all labeled. That way it uh, helps you understand uh, where they need to go back in for reassembly. Okay, next we're going to get our two millimeter wrench <coughs> and we're going to find the set screw that's at the underneath side of the tension where the tension assembly slides into the machine. I'm going to loosen it but I'm not going to remove it. It's a little bitty and would be hard to find if you dropped it. Just need to loosen it enough that you can gently pull the assembly out. You don't want to pull it out too far because there is a zip tie holding the wire for the electronic tension measurement on the inside to keep it from interfering with the take-up lever. And if you pull too hard you could pull it off of that zip tie. So pull it out just far enough that you can get to the set screw that holds the shaft and barrel in the assembly. I'm going to put up a picture so you can see that. Now we're going to loosen the set screw on the tension assembly shaft. It should only take a couple of turns. And now you can see the shaft is coming out. And next we need to get the spring out. And to get the spring out, we're going to gently rotate it and wiggle it. 
you can see it's starting to slide out now. Now we've got the spring out, now we're going to rotate the end of it out through the slot. And bingo, we have the old spring. And when we look at the spring, and I'll put up a picture up so you can see it better, there is a tab on the inside of it. I'm trying to point at it, there you go. That tab needs to go in a slot that's on the what's called the split bolt shaft. So there's a slot right on the end here. Get it up so you can see it. Rotate it around and your fingernail will find it. There. You can see my fingernails in that barrel, uh, the slot on the barrel. That tab of the spring needs to go in that slot. That's how it keeps, uh, it locks in place. And if it's not in there, the spring will rotate around and not uh, operate properly. Here are replacement springs. In this case, this is uh, Handy Quilter part number QM10197. These springs are the same for the Simply 16 all the way up to the Infinity. If you have a machine from another retailer, such as a uh, Baby Lock Regalia, uh, they're the same spring, but they'll probably have a different part number. You can get them from your local dealer or from the manufacturer. Okay, now we have our new check spring. So what we're going to first do is to put the tip of the spring through the slot and gently rotate it. And then we're going to push the base of the spring into the side of the barrel. And bingo, we've got it seated inside. Now we need to take our shaft and put it in so that the tab of that spring slides in the slot. And the way we will know that is when we move the shaft, the spring moves. You can see the spring moving as I'm moving the shaft. Now we're going to pull the uh, assembly out. And before we put set the set screw, we want the, we want the vertical part of the spring just barely touching the right side of the slot. That's, uh, that will give it proper tension. Now we're going to pull the assembly out enough that we can get in and tighten up the set screw. Now I'm going to put a photo up to show this better, but there is a slot on the tension barrel called an undercut. And that undercut is where the set screw needs to connect. So when you push it back in, need to make sure the set screw sits in the undercut. Now we're going to push the assembly gently back in place, making sure it's fully seated so that <coughs> undercut will uh, contact the set screw when we get ready to tighten it. Now from an orientation perspective, we want the vertical part of the spring to be pointing straight up. Or perhaps with a little, if you can't get it straight up, if it's pointed a little bit towards 11 o'clock, it's not going to hurt. But you sure don't want it pointed anywhere towards 1 o'clock. You can see I can rotate it. Now it's pointing towards 1. Now it's pointing towards 11. We want it pointing straight up. Once we get it straight up, gently hold the assembly. And tighten your set screw. Make sure the spring is straight up and make sure when you push it down it springs all the way back up quickly to the uh, uh, edge of the slot. Now it's time to install our parts in the reverse order that they were taken off. So first of all we're going to put the inner tension disc, the outer tension disc, making sure that the flat uh, convex portions are touching each other. Next we're going to put the uh, spring base in and make sure that the uh, center that's sticking out sticks towards the outside. 
Next we're going to install the volcano spring or cone spring and the tail of it goes through the center of the split bolt and it should uh, sit straight on that spring base. Next we're going to install the detente washer and uh, I'll again I'll quick, uh, stick a quick picture up so you can see which side goes towards the machine. And lastly we're going to install the knob. Now you'll note that your tension uh, has been reset uh, because we've taken this all apart so the previous readings will not be accurate anymore so you're going to have to reset your tension and note it may be different from what it was previously and also note that the tension readings on these electronic uh, tension measurement systems are designed to be relative not uh, not exactly the same on each machine nor even from uh, uh, a machine over its lifespan. So uh, once you get it set, maybe you were on 20 before and you might be on 18 now or on 24 now. Uh, set your tension so you've got good stitch loop quality and uh, move on from there. Now you're ready to get back to quilting. So thread your machine, put a project on it, and go have fun. Thanks. Mm -hmm.